For the week of March 12th, 2018, this is Roll for Crit here with your weekly board game news roundup. Board Game Geek's 12th annual Golden Geek Awards have finally announced their winners for the year of 2017. We've got awards for best board game overall, best solo game, uh, most innovative game. Most awards went to Gloomhaven. Almost all of them, all the ones that I just named, went to Gloomhaven. They definitely swept the awards this year in almost every category. There were a lot of runner-ups from games like uh, Spirit Island and Seventh Continent. Azul got Best Family Game. Tales from the Loop went for uh, Best RPG of the Year. Uh, you can see that whole list for yourself at Board Game Geek's website, but certainly Gloomhaven was the undisputed champion across yeah. the board. I really feel uh, Lady Bird got robbed in the thematic <laughs> game department. They really did. I mean, Get Out should have got it for the diversity alone. <laughs> Uh, why board game? Why Golden Geek Awards so white? <laughs> no, I'm sorry, <laughs> but Gloomhaven, uh, like another again, a game that famously uh, we did not play, and it was not on our top ten lists because of that. So uh, it's hard for us to, to comment. But clearly, the people have spoken. Clearly, they really love this game. I mean, yeah. Well, at the time we made our top ten lists, we didn't even delve into it too much because we just never had the time and chance to. So, but I mean, it's a, that, I feel like it sort of happens a lot in these Golden Geek Awards. Tends that one game tends to, if it's a, like, for example, this is a thematic game that could also be a solo game, and it could also be a cooperative game. If it's in those categories and wins best game, it's probably pretty likely going to win those as well. Yeah, uh, we're working on playing it very, very soon to get some videos up for, about Gloomhaven for you guys. But, I, you know, as people who loved Seventh Continent, I'm curious to see if I will, if I will feel the same way, because I feel like Seventh Continent didn't get enough love in these awards, I don't know. But again, you can go see them for yourself and make your own decisions. Pathfinder has announced it's coming out with a new 2.0 edition, which is the first actual edition change to Pathfinder ever. Uh, this will be being playtested online starting in August, as well as some physical locations and of course, Gen Con. Uh, you can probably guess what 2.0 would bring, some of them pretty obvious, some balancing changes. Uh, some of the classes that were in expansions are will be part of the core, as well as adding goblins, which have been pretty mascot, I feel, in the Pathfinder series. People like those goblins. Right. <laughs> uh, as a, one of the races you can play as. However, combat seems to be getting a whole big change involving like three new actions with a lot of different spells and stuff. Yeah, the, the, you're going to be able to... There used to be an old Pathfinder, like all these different types of actions, mm -hmm. which is sort of like uh, coming from D&D. I think similar how there's, you know, there's bonus actions and and things like that that take place and they're they're really simplifying it it sounds like to just be everything's just an action and you so you can even attack twice in the same turn potentially uh, which is pretty cool uh, but they did say that like subsequent attacks would get some kind of a hit to them like they wouldn't be as powerful but I really like that idea again we haven't played uh, original Pathfinder no we actually if you look on our set we because uh, they're mostly my books but we just got the core Pathfinder. I mean, we, we got Starfinder, which that's the one I'm working on right now, learning to play and stuff. Yeah, but I know that that's the area in D&D &D that is usually the messiest and most slows down the game, at least in, my, in our experience, is combat. So anything to simplify that and to make those actions more exciting, more engaging, that's great. Well, what's interesting to me is, as I said, this is their first edition. No, right. if second edition. I mean, their first, <laughs> their first time doing a new edition. Sorry. Uh, yeah. So second edition, they have a lot of books out. Like, I mean, you've seen them all. They like, certainly do. Ultimate Intrigue, Ultimate Combat, Item. I mean, and I'm wondering, like, are those all going to be need be converted into the second edition? Uh, like I said, we haven't played it, and I've heard some people say, like, do we really need a new edition? I don't know how pe people are attached to the co old combat system compared to the new. Uh, of course, like I said, they are playtesting this, so we can find out whether... Yeah, and it's free. If you mm -hmm. want to try the game out in August, it's digitally at least, you're going to be able to download an entire core rulebook plus an adventure book, like 400 pages, they said. Everything you need to try to play the game yourself. So that's, that's pretty awesome, and hopefully that'll give them a lot of great feedback, and they'll really be fine-tuning this system. Uh, seems like a great opportunity for people like us to jump in and get a, get a fresh start on a brand new edition. Well, that's what I think... They really need to pay attention, though, with this free thing, because a lot of the people, I assume, who are going to download it are veterans. Mm. And their input is important, 
But if you're looking at streamlining and stuff, I think a lot that usually that means you're trying to get a lot more fresh blood into the mix. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, you really need to make sure whether the people downloading can be like, all right, I'm going to take this and play with some friends who I know don't play RPGs. Or if you can maybe find a way to talk, like email some people who you know, like maybe you ask some people like in the video game community, be like, hey, test this out if you don't play RPGs or something. Yeah. yeah. That's what I would really hope that they get a mixture of both the veteran and new player base on this. WizKids has announced that they will be releasing a brand new version of Mage Knight Ultimate Edition, which includes the base game of Mage Knight along with all three of its existing expansions, as well as a few new cards and some new paint jobs for those minis. Otherwise, it will be the same game, just with everything included in one big box and all the rules in there. Uh, it's going to be released in September of this year for $125 USD, uh, which is a lot, but considering it comes with all those expansions, I think you're actually saving a little bit of money if you want to buy everything involved in the Mage Knight universe. No, I don't think that's a bad price off the bat, like if you don't have it or anything. Mm -hmm. But what's annoying, what's more annoying uh, is... What annoys you? <laughs> that it comes with something new five cards, like such a small thing that if, even for me, I don't have everything. So that's like a bit more uh, like of a tempting buy. I only have the base and I got Crag because I got like a, like Crang, damage. You mean. Crang, sorry. <laughs> uh, so for some people, you know, who have everything, it's like, it sort of sucks at the five card, you know. Yeah, it's, I mean, I guess, but uh, uh, I, my guess is they're not game. I know you. I know, but I mean, I don't like them either. I don't blame you. The exclusive stuff can be annoying. They, who knows? They may sell these somewhere else or give them away somewhere right. as extra freebies. But the other big thing is, I would like to see since usually this kind of thing implies that no more expansions. You know, this is the definitive mm -hmm. everything you want. Mm -hmm. A really nice insert. Yeah, like I want to be able to open that up and not have everything sloshing around everywhere. Yeah, hopefully they do that. That would be great. Yeah, for me, this is uh, honestly pretty kind of tempting because unlike you, I don't have any of the stuff. I've just played your copy, and I really do love Mage Knight, so... I would actually be fine if you bought That would make <laughs> you feel a lot less bad. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you could have to have the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. uh, but so that's kind of cool anyway. If you're a Mage Knight fan, uh, let us know what you think. If you uh, already have everything and you're mad, <laughs> or you got nothing and you're excited. <laughs> In a previous video, we talked about the Harry Potter miniature adventure game, which was going to be coming to Kickstarter from Knight Models. They've actually decided now to not go to Kickstarter, instead just do pre-orders off their website. Uh, you can visit their website, Knightly Models, and you can get the core for $100, or add on other expansions, and I believe everything should total around $370 for everything. Yeah, it's so th this is pretty unique. You, you don't usually see this these days. Companies usually like Kickstarter, uh, but I guess they decided that they just were better off going through their own their own site. I mean, I don't know if they were worried they wouldn't be able to meet a goal on Kickstarter or uh, what el what else else their reasoning could be. Or they just decided we don't want to give Kickstarter ten percent or whatever they're supposed to. That give would be my only guess. Um... When I look at Kickstarters, a lot of times companies go to them because, for better or for worse, pretty much you're convincing people to pre-order your game at full price instead of waiting for a cheaper price, maybe at like, Cool Stuff or mm -hmm. Amazon and stuff. So that's usually where Kickstarter, I feel like that's the reason board game companies like Kickstarter. This, I think it's just the same thing and they just know because they're Harry Potter, even if they have that really ugly box cover, mm -hmm. That they can just get a, they can do the pre-order on their site, and that, not that that's a bad thing. I mean, that's I think Modifius, Modifius was it the mini other miniature company mm -hmm. did that with the Fallout minis, mm -hmm. right? And I mean, it sort of makes sense, and maybe you can even it's easier to update and change stuff if you want to be like where you've made a new expansion or something. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I guess if they have the resources and the distribution models in place, why not Plus, do it themselves? Plus, you don't have to be like. Because uh, the other big thing, though, with Kickstarter is people, because the way Kickstarter works, it's usually, you know, people who don't have the money to make these games. They'll be like, if you buy this here, we're going to throw in these stretch goals and you get more stuff. But, like, we've seen comp bigger companies, what they do is you have to pay an extra $50 to get all the add-on or stretch goals and stuff. Right, right. So why do, they don't even have to do that now. They don't even just, have to. <laughs> the expansions are there. Yeah, well, if you're a Harry Potter fan, those are uh, going to be for sale in just a couple days after this video is launched, so check it out. 
The Monster Apocalypse is coming back to us once again. Privateer Press has announced that they are kind of rebooting their miniatures game Monster Apocalypse that uh, was originally out in 2008. This is a big old kaiju battle miniatures game between, there are two factions, the Destroyers and the Protectors. So it's a tough choice. It's a real, there are a lot of moral gray areas there. <laughs> which one is right, which one is wrong. Uh, but you'll be able to choose between different factions and mix and match. The big difference that they are touting so far between this and the old version are the minis are going to be supposedly much more high quality metal and resin figures that you're going to be assembling and all that kind of stuff before you buy. So more in line with their current other games like the War Machine hordes and all that stuff from Privateer Press. Uh, so, uh, you know, th this is a name that I'm familiar with, but not a game I really hear people talk about a lot. It just, I, just like something that rings a bell in the back of my head. Uh, but I guess, I guess there must be a following, or they're hoping to build a new one from this new version of it. You're, you're our resident Yeah, I actually, <laughs> even though, as much as I love Kaiju, I had not heard about this one. I mean, obviously the idea of, I mean, there's a reason why I think King of Tokyo and uh, Rampage and Meeple City were, did well, the idea of the giant monster rampaging. Mm -hmm. You combined the old name oh, and the new name, but yeah, it's fine, people know what you mean. <laughs> uh, Terror Meeple City, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what it was. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> but I do think there, this, I, I don't know what, where it started, but I think recently, at least in American films, there's been an upsurge in kaiju movies. Mm -hmm. Was it Pacific Rim? Pacific Rim, and then you had the new Godzilla. Yeah, there's and now we have King the new Kong. Rampage movie. Right. It's here and there. It's yeah. kind of coming out. <laughs> it just seems a bit more frequent recently. Yeah. And that could be maybe what they're hoping to write off that wave. But this isn't the first time we've seen them reboot a line. I think this one, though, was, was gone for a while, it sounds like, mm -hmm. compared to their previous ones. I mean, this is definitely, they're trying to bring in more, I think, more players into this thing. Uh, the unpainted minis, which is sort of like... I think it's one of those things that I think uh, beginners probably would like painted minis, but in the end, people like being able to paint their, like, this is, you may have one of whatever this monster is, but mine's in bright blue. Yeah, the hardcore people like, like that customization aspect for sure. And the one other thing is, because I didn't hear about this, I did Google image, or Google this, and in the images came up Voltron for the previous game. So I don't know like if they actually were willing to look at crossovers in this, which wouldn't make a big deal of like if you actually did bring in like Voltron, which does is on Netflix, so it's in recent. I mean Pacific Rim we just talked about, or <laughs> the, the new Rampage monsters, which don't look anything like their actual video game counterparts. Mm -hmm. Bring in some uh, Power Rangers. Oh, I, oh, oh, I'd be all in if they went there. Some, uh, other <laughs> Godzilla, <robots. laughs> you know, you yeah, could actually. It could happen. Uh, we'll mm -hmm. see what they bring us with Monster Apocalypse coming out later this year. Earlier, we talked about a tease about Zombicide in Space. We now finally have the name of the game, Zombicide Invader. In this, you'll be taking the role of survivors, not surprising, fighting off the Xenos. These will be a horrific swarm of infected aliens coming to kill you. Your goal will be to play a mission, survive, and kill as many of the Xenos as possible. Uh, it seems that they will be as predict uh, played by the game, so they'll have that sort of predictable mentality in previous games. However, supposedly they have some new tricky, nasty tactics that throw you off your game. It really, it, I mean, it sounds exactly like Zombicide, <laughs> but with aliens. Uh, I'm a little disappointed that, uh, you know, they, we had speculated that they had trademarked this name, Xenocide, which sounded cool, and they're just calling it Zombicide Invader? What a, that's a really dull subtitle in my opinion. I'm guessing <laughs> they just want to see you can just the entire Zombicide line a little, but... Yeah, I mean, I get that part, but, like, Invader is the best thing they could come up with? Like, Invasion would be better, uh, or something like that. Uh, or but, even Zombis, Zombicide Xenocide. Yeah, something. Yeah, I don't know. It's a little sort of strange, but it does, you know, whatever. Aliens, Zombicide, and... Uh, this is, of course, it'll be in, this one will be in Kickstarter. Yes, uh, it will be coming in April. Yep. So uh, if you're excited for Invader, <laughs> uh, keep an eye out. And finally, we're just going to run through a few new licensed games that were announced this week. You got Sonic the Hedgehog Crash Course from IDW Games. There's a new Pacific Rim game called Extinction from River Horse. Uh, there's a new Marvel game based on the upcoming Avengers movie called Thanos Rising. That's from USAopoly. And finally, WizKids has a Star Trek, ga Star Trek game called Galactic Enterprises, uh, which centers around Ferengis.
because, you know, there hasn't been a Ferengi game mm-hmm. yet. So there's a whole a bunch of those for you. A- any of those catch your eye you're excited about? I mean, I need to see the Pacific Rim movie first before I get excited about that. <laughs> well, I can tell you, you could already be a little worried because um, I know River Horse also did the uh, Labyrinth and Dark Crystal games, which we haven't played, but I have heard are not particularly well received. So doesn't inspire yeah, too much confidence. Yeah, I, uh, I read the description of the, the game and I wasn't wowed. Uh-huh, it's, it's Jaegers v. Kaijus, right? And yeah. They're, and they're fighting. <laughs> uh, the Sonic game I found very interesting because it's a racing game and this is less than a month after we had another Sonic racing game on Kickstarter from a different company. I was a little confused. I'm like, wait, didn't we already talk about that? Yeah, two different Sonic games. This one, though, looks like more of the classic art style. Mm. But, I mean... Apparently, Sonic is finally like, we can't make video games anymore. We're going to the board games. (laughs) Yeah, and uh, the Ferenga game just sounds really funny. You're actually... (laughs) It takes place in Deep Space Nine, and you're trying to be the best capitalist you're selling and trading goods at the market <laughs> and you can like kind of make alliances with people a little bit here and there but you're Ferengis which sounds kind of funny uh, so those all come out at various points in 2018 have fun with them so that's our news roundup for March 12 2018 uh, we hope you enjoyed our stories if you have any interesting comments don't forget to leave them down below until next time I'm Will Keeler I'm Jonathan Estes Let's roll for crit <laughs> Don't forget to like and subscribe and leave some comments down below. Yeah.